let's take a look at the um, layered shader and the uh, mix shader. So a couple of different ways to achieve similar results, uh, both with the Arnold um, shaders and not the built-in Maya ones. So this is a metal wall with some rust in some spots. Okay, it's not the most elegantly laid out, but it proves a point. Um, we've got kind of a metallic, shiny, reflective uh, shader, and we have a rusty shader that's not picking up any light at all. It would probably help if I gave the scene a little bit of extra help. But um, And this would probably be a little bit more prominent if I take the... I'm just gonna, whoops, I'm just going to grab this metal uh, shader and grab that material. Okay, so here's our metal. And if I just uh, decrease this roughness. Oh, that's right. I've got a, uh, I've got a math node in here adding some roughness. I just set that to zero. You can see that that metal is a little bit more shiny. That's actually reflecting the background. Um, so I've got an HDRI in there, and you can see it reflecting some buildings. And then you've got the rust that isn't reflective at all. Uh, and so just to go over this node setup real quick, I have my metal shader, which has um, a map defining the metalness. Okay, so that's plugged into, in the base section, the metalness value. I have a texture going into color, uh, and then I have one going into specular roughness. I did add a float math node just to um, increase the roughness of it a little bit. Um, just so it was a little less mirror-like. Okay, that's the metal shader. Uh, if, if we just look at, I can apply that to the wall by itself. And that's what we get with the metal. Then I have a rust material, which is a pretty basic setup as well. If we graph that network, it has a texture for color, a texture for metalness, and it has a normal map on it. Okay, and so this is what we get with that. And then there is the last uh, part of this is the la AI layer shader. So that is in the Arnold shader uh, section. Instead of standard surface, you go up a couple, uh, you get the layer shader right here. And what this uh, allows you to do is if you go to the property editor here, we have up to eight layers that we can add. Uh, so eight different shaders that we can layer together. It's like the mix shader, just more. Uh, so you layers one and two are enabled by default. And then you know, right now, I don't have anything in, the, in layer three, but you just click enable. And then it's a middle click and drag your shader into the input. Uh, sometimes you have to, once you drag it in, you need to like click on the name and then click back and then it'll update. Um, I don't know if it's a bugger or what have you, but I've got those two. Um, layer one, the mix is just set to one because we want all of that. And then layer two, the mix is driven by a texture. And that texture, let me, layer shader, oh, I just need to I'll close this and relaunch it. Okay. Now we're just not going to show it. So this is um, with the layer shader, shader applied. I have a texture plugged into the mix for layer two. Okay, and that texture is just a, a metal grunge texture. The image texture looks like this. Okay, so I just took a picture of basically white or is maybe blue paint chipping on a wall. I turned it black and white. I increased the contrast. And this is what's driving that mix node. Okay. So if I if I go side by side with them, you can kind of see, you know, see the similar shapes. Um, and that's all it is to get that effect. Okay. And, and uh, you, know, you can pair this with maybe turn this into a displacement map too. you know, decrease the contrast a little bit. This can also be a displacement map to give you some additional texture. Uh, but that's a kind of a two-layer thing. Uh, I'll show you one more version of this. 
and that's going to be with three layers. So if I open up my stucco brick wall, don't need to save that. Uh, the render version of this will look like this. So it's actually three layers. We have a brick wall, we have a stucco or concrete wall, and then we have this poster over the top. I do have a displacement map on it, which is uh, affecting, you know, you can definitely see it on these cracks here. If I zoom in a little bit, it's very subtle, but you can see it on the bricks as well. Um, what I should probably do is go into Photoshop and increase the contrast in that section so those bricks are a little bit more pronounced. Um, but you know the uh, the geometry is real simple. And then let's look at the uh, the nodes here. So this is the overall thing. It's all of these nodes, but it's not really that complicated. We have our brick shader that has uh, a texture for color, a texture for normal and a texture for brick roughness, uh, or the specular roughness. And what we can actually do, if I bring up my Arnold render view here, come on. There it is. OK. Found it. So uh, if I click on this display selected, so here is our brick shader. So we can see both of these at the same time. Whoops. No, don't want to do that. Give me back my Arnold. Oh, it just went to the bottom. I guess that kind of works. Um, so this will, by clicking this, it'll allow me to see just what I have selected. So here's my brick, uh, just my diffuse color. Here's my normal map. Here's my roughness map. I do also have um, a displacement map in there, which... Uh, actually, that's only on the uh, the mix or the layer shader, so we'll get back to that. Uh, I've got my wall, which is uh, the concrete or the stucco. So again, that has a color, it has a specular roughness, and then it has a bump. And then I have my poster, which is just a PNG into the base color. I haven't done a bump map, which I would probably do like a wrinkled paper uh, bump. And you can also do a, a specular map. I just did this real quick to kind of prove the point. All of these then are fading into my AI layer shader, which let me get this out of the way. And we'll see. I'm going to collapse all of my uh, individual shaders. Hopefully save a little bit of space here. That'll work. And we'll graph this network one more time. Actually, let's increase the space here so we can see what's going on. We'll just close that create menu. And we will graph the network. Okay, so here's everything that's going on. Close that down too. There we go. So here's my layer shader. I have three layers. I have the bricks, the stucco, and then the poster. And what I have is the stucco has a mixed texture, uh, which is that is going to be mix two. Okay, so this is that mixed texture. Uh, all I did is I, I found a uh, ripped paper image. And I need the, there we go. So it's just ripped paper. I used the UVs to kind of figure out where this needed to be. Uh, I figured that would work pretty well for stucco falling off and revealing the brick behind it. Okay, and then on top of that we have the poster layer, and the poster layer has, um, in order to give it the kind of faded peeling off look, uh, I actually have that same grunge texture that I used for the metal and rusty wall. 
I have that plugged into the mix node for the layer shader. All right, so layer three mix. Um, that is my. That is that node. And the texture just by itself looks like this. Okay. Um, and that was just, again, in the, in the Photoshop file, if I open that up real quick and kind of see how I made that. But it's, you export the UVs, uh, it tells you where everything is. Let me find my UVs. There they are. I need to move them above so you can actually see them. So here's my wall UVs. I, I positioned the poster where I wanted it. Um, I did a clipping mask uh, so that you, the grunge is only applied to the parts where the poster is. Um, but that's it. So I did that. I brought that into Arnold. And then the final result is this. So you see uh, everything in there. We've got the displacement. Uh, we've got multiple kind of views and angles. You can see how the, the light highlights on the uh, stucco section is different than it does on the brick. You've got that sense of bumpiness and then we've got this really nice faded, I also desaturated the poster, um, really nice faded tex uh, texture on the poster and it fades into the wall rather beautifully. You set up your individual shaders, you bring them into the layer, um, into the layered shader, and then you can just use a texture to decide what parts get what materials. Um, so using things like we search for grunge textures or dirt textures, um, scratches, things like that, it can give a nice kind of organic dynamic feel to the way that the textures interact. Um, and then you can also combine displacement maps for two different materials, you know, put them together. And that's what I did with the, the brick and the stucco, is I combined the brick displacement with uh, the stucco, which is super subtle and really tough to see, but there is some variation there. Uh, combine those together so that, you know, we got both displacements on there. And I could add the poster as well if I wanted to give a little bit of uh, thickness to that. Because this is again just mapped to a flat surface, so there's a lot you can do just with, with textures.